do this all right i think you were not able to hear me but i'm gonna start with this the beautiful face that you just saw right now needs no introduction uh, a beautiful young life that had great dreams aspirations who made a mark for herself in such a young age and unfortunately we lost uh, uh, this is not going to be a, a a a very like you know easy session for anyone for for everyone it will be very emotional no doubt about it especially for the mom who on this particular date has who has been fighting for the last eight plus years and is continuing to fight no matter what happens no matter what uh, the people go against her create hurdles in her personal and other you know places of her life and aspects of life uh this is going to be very 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 tough but this is not an interview let me just put the put the thing right away it's not an interview this is just a session to show our love our support our emotions and also tell her that we all are with her now and forever that's going to be the whole session about so please show all your love and all your support to rabia ji as i get her into the screen namaste rabia ji hi stay i know Sorry. it's not going to be easy rabia ji i know and uh, please i've been meditating and fasting and praying and uh, i've come very far in some uh, you know other destination to reflect on my daughter to be in my sanctuary and to be by myself so i have been reflecting a lot about what happened and why i had to go through this why she had to go through this and it she has opened the doors of wisdom for me and she has told me in many ways you know what life is all about and what this world is all about what the purpose of life is you know and uh, how we, how we are actually one family in this whole world and how it is you know that we deal with each other's emotions so it has been a very it has been a retreat for me and uh, i i wanted this that because i want peace within myself and when i'm in peace my daughter also in heaven is in peace because we are definitely mystically connected and uh, you know she came for a purpose and when her purpose was exhausted and whatever the reason god had planned for whichever way it happened it has happened but my only uh, uh, fight for 9 years was that the child who is innocent who loved and who had trust was betrayed and when the system of the nation is you know to give justice to create to create that law and order in society to have that civilization so then you know do, don't cherry pick cases don't cherry pick that this is the case we are going to give justice and that is the case we are going to put it aside that is very unfair and don't cherry pick you know that who you have an agenda with you are going to put a case against and innocently even put them behind sorry i'm in a area that i can't go anywhere else but that's fine have... that's fine we can hear you we can hear you loud and clear so i had been whole night awake and praying and imagining jia and her memories and so much love that child gave us and in that love i also want to tell that i am enjoying that love and memories of her and i'm doing exactly like how she would have felt i've come to her most favorite place destination by the sea and i am absolutely in serenity and absolutely in peace and very much there 
she's holding me, I'm hugging her, and I am with her and she's with me. It's a matter of visibility and invisibility, you know, spirit and form. So it's just one gate. We come to the earth, we go to heaven, we come back from heaven. So it is all our karma. Now, coming back to my fight for justice and fight for truth, it's more truth rather than justice because justice is God's game. It's not people's game. People, you know, cherry pick who they want to give justice. Sometimes even innocent, you know, people who are not guilty are punished. And that's not justice. So my fight had been actually, you know, Varun, only for truth, to surface the truth. And truth is like oil. Do you understand? And oil always surfaces on water. You cannot right. hide oil. No matter what, it will surface it. It's a matter of time. You will read scriptures, your holy scriptures and everything. And all the messengers of God have said, you know, have patience, truth will shine. And my, my fear and my worries that I had expressed was that our children are going to be treated like this in Bollywood. That's unfair. Bollywood needs uh, its time for them to clean up, clean up, you know, because even the oceans cannot sustain dirt. It also explodes and puts it out of its system. So this is what my fight was for all these six, seven, uh, nine years. And I'm still there. The latest in the court is that CBI is pleading now after nine years for the court to give evidence for the analysis, forensic analysis. They had to put the charge. They had to put the charge because they did not want to stop the case because the case had a lot of truth that was not being surfaced. And now they are struggling in, in Maharashtra, in the Mumbai court, to get the evidences which police did never give. And see, similarly, it's the case with Sushant Singh and Disha Salian. They don't even want to open the page because it's so heinous. It is so sad. It is so horrific that even those who will open the case will be horrified with the way the child was, uh, was uh, found and the way even Jia was uh, strangulated and staged, her death was staged. So, you know, everyone has raised voice. I had many, many supports. Recently, my daughters told me, mommy, they have suspended my, uh, my Twitter account. And she was yeah. crying. I said, listen, our fight is not to have followers on Twitter. Our, our, our fight is not to have that fame and name, you know, and to have so many people that we are building up uh, as followers and as viewers. No, no, no. Baby, your fight, you are seeds, and we will multiply. We will keep fighting. We are warriors. We are not afraid. We are not afraid of death. And we are not afraid of uh, facing uh, the judgment or whatever the order will, will be from the court. And we are not afraid to come as witness in the court. So this is what I told my child. And she said, all right, I get it, mommy. Thank you very much. So, you know, I'm still an anchor for them as I was anchor for Gia. And we are remembering her. My children, I am far away. I want you to get away. My children are there. They are praying and they are putting lights and flowers. It's, uh, you know, it's very early morning in London. And uh, and I am, I am absolutely in memory of her and with her. And I'm feeling her presence around me. And this is how my feeling is. Now, I have expressed myself and uh, my fight will go on. It's not even a fight. It is just asking, pleading the government that, look, this has happened to my child. She is gone. She will not speak. The deads don't come and speak uh, and stand for them. We are. We are also co-victims. We stand for them. We are the voice of those victims. And until unless, you know, the movement will not be there in the society, in that community, the government will not wake up. And social media today is a very, very sharp weapon. You know what happened with Israel and Palestine. You know, it was social media pressure on government. So Israel had to move away and seize the fire. So I am saying and pleading people that my agenda is not to punish X, Y, Z. My agenda is to surface the truth and let the families of the co-victims, you know, be in peace and have a closure. That is what my request and my, and my, I'm not motivating or provoking people, but I'm requesting people 
to whether come out on street or get on social media or raise your voice or if you know you're so influential if criminals can be so influ influential that they can reach the politicians and uh, you know pay the fees or bribe or whatever and uh, 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 provoke them to to not to investigate and sabotage the cases so we we should also use our influences and the power of our voice to influence the politicians and the and the authorities and the law and and uh, uh, you know law and, and uh, uh, peace order the people uh, like police to also you know stand for what they are it's their duty and to listen to us so it is our also duty as citizens to stand for them and because this is the truth we have to raise our voice and influence them that truth is truth and you cannot hide it because people are getting against them and they will lose out at the end of the day because they are hand joining hands with the criminals and it's an equal crime so this is my my request i am not angry i am not crying i am not i'm very much in peace and i really want peace if the government sets uh, you know law and enforcement for peace of the society for the peace of the community and the nation then they have to do their duty they must uh, come up trumps and they must uh, uh, let a uh, citizen know that they are doing their duty and they are lawful to their vows the pledge that they have taken am i right varu Absolutely, absolutely. And every single word that you've said, uh, Rabia ji, one thing which I have to say, you know, hats off to your, your, uh, you know, motivation and your, you know, just to get, get justice, not justice, but, you know, the facts out. You know, and uh, we are, we have to be blamed. We are equally responsible for, for this state because if I, as a mother, would have not, uh, you know, stood for my daughter, then what sort of a mother am I? That's true. You know, yeah. this is a world, this is a forest. We have got to be fearless. And until yeah. unless we are not fearless, you know, they can say anything. They can say a lie on our face. They can say that you are so and so, so and so. That's okay. Because they are doing what they are paid for. <laughs> not what they have vowed for. You see, taking a vow and pledging and saying that I will protect my nation and the citizens of the nation, you are actually, you are corrupting it. So every single officer, I am not saying all the officers, but one single officer, if he is corrupt, then he is absolutely spoiling the whole ocean. Correct. It's spoiling the system, the reputation. Today's CBI's yeah. reputation, today's police's reputation, today the government's reputation, you know, they are all, public is not now foolish. They, you know, their narrative is going into the intellectuality of every citizen. And citizens are not ready to believe what they say. So the narrative is changing because more and more witnesses, more and more people who are fearless are coming up and surfacing the truth. The police gets very uh, scared because witnesses will, you know, the criminals will pay the witnesses and threaten them because these things have happened and they will not come up front. So the police, you know, they they will they will be standing nowhere in court because what is justice? Let me tell you the justice. We ask for justice. What is justice? A judge is sitting in the court. He is not an investigating officer, and the judge is not a forensic expert, right? And the judge is in the court. He wants the law enforcement officers and the authorities to bring the evidences. And on the basis of the evidences, he will then judge because the, the, the statue of justice is blind. So he will weigh and put his own uh, intellect. Do you understand? So when there is no evidence, so what justice you're talking about? Yeah, so we true. people should pick up the evidences and give it to the, the, the CBI and the police says that Rabia is not bringing evidences. What evidences am I going to bring? You're, you are there in the crime scene. It is your duty to pick up the evidences. It is your duty to interrogate the criminals. It is your duty to bring all the witnesses. Where is your fear on the witnesses? Witnesses fear criminals more than police. So how they are going to bring the, uh, the evidences? 
and and when police join com, is complicit with the with the criminals then the evidences are sabotaged correct they are correct. destroyed so what yeah. is what why you why one can you know even uh, say a judiciary system is bad why when the law enforcement has not taken uh, to the justice system the evidences how can a judge give an uh, give a uh, give an order Audit. yeah absolutely and i think so, uh, you know we've also heard uh, not only from yeah. you but also yeah sorry go ahead abole i said this is very clear you can have you know campaigns after campaigns but what about the uh, evidence for example disha salian was killed somewhere there is a crime scene there is a scene of crime something maybe a hair maybe her tooth maybe her nail something must be broken she fell from 14th floor something must be there some forensic evidence is there nothing was collected sushant singh you know his room his, the way he was the ligature jia khan the ligature till today has not been handed to cbi for the forensic analysis the blackberry where the messages were they were on blackberry that night right fighting and whatever uh, it it is the evidence is not there uh, with us with cbi or with the forensic laboratory the biometric lock both jia and suraj pancholi had the access to the biometric lock the entrance to the apartment so that was not also analyzed so there are so many things the evidences have not been taken so what justice am i uh, am i going to uh, ask the judge to give so we are i my fight is for truth you bring the evidences in front i have done more homework than cbi of or police could have done i have given them the 300 pages of the real facts even those pages it has been handed to the court it has been handed to the criminal uh, to the uh, to the accused also that there's not a one word and the and and to uh, the the cherry on the pie is the bollywood icons i don't want to name them because they are they are cabal they are too many all of them trying to protect my question is why is cbi lying why is uh, police lying why they are covering who they are covering right right so yep. they know they know who they are covering they know why they are lying they know who has who is putting pressure on them so it is all the police the authorities who are supposed to go to the justice system they are being under pressure they have been told or they have or influenced whether power whether status whether whatever but they have been influenced to lie and not to take the evidences to the court so that means those authorities that we are pleading and begging for for truth and justice are hiding it right and i agree uh, rabi ji uh, even though you know we've heard you speak like this for for a very long time and i don't want to make it like a, a interview or anything because today is a very very uh, you know special and um, it's it's a very emotional day for you as well but at the same time if you could tell us a little bit more about uh, jia some of the sweet memories that you could share with us uh, as we all remember her today around the world we'd love to know you know from my perspective all i can say is she's one of the smartest most beautiful girls that you know we've we've witnessed uh, especially if you consider the bollywood industry i don't think there is anybody who can touch the kind of brain power she had the beauty she had but please share some some memories with us all that what you're saying the brain power the talent the articulation the way she spoke the way she carried herself and everything it was she that all that put together was a threat to bollywood for the uneducated bollywood yep absolutely for the uneducated because bollywood says we don't want to know what is your degree of qualification and all like that we just want to know that whether are you going to are you willing to do what we want you to do yep. you don't need to be qualified we educate our children you know for so that they have the sensibility her sensibility was actually sabotaged she was manipulated and she was you tell me when you are 24 25 how you can be manipulated you are still innocent you may be very talented very articulated but you are still innocent 
and she went for something abstract. She didn't go for wealth. She didn't go for money. She went for love. She was strong. But the day, but the day she gave up, but the day she realized that very night, throwing flowers, look at the body language, look at the CCTV. Police did not show CCTV. Till today, CCTV footages are not with the court. They were never given to, C uh, to CBI. How CBI has begged police to give uh, 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 what they want, never, they never got it. It was me who have given uh, most of the uh, things to them. And that, that CCTV was also sabotaged, doctored. We, we got the CCTV after 10 days. I didn't even know there was a CCTV. I came to know from the, from the police officer that your building has got a CCTV. So I collected. When I went to collect that very uh, uh, time, the, uh, uh, the secretary says it's with the police. So police is holding that for 15 days. Why? And after 15 days, they return it. And then I get uh, what I, whatever the copy I got, I gave it to CBI. And in that, you can see the father entering, yep. Yep. Gia entering, Gia throwing flowers, Gia's body language. The, uh, uh, the call log says that she was on the phone, but CCTV does not show that she's on the phone. The time that call log shows that she should be on, CC on, on, uh, well, on uh, the phone fighting, but she is walking. So how is that, uh, that uh, time gap? The time I'm entering the gate, the, C uh, uh, the call log shows at that time I had called Anju Mahendru already. So why there is a mismatch? All these questions, you know, I have raised many times. I am raising it today. And you're talking about, about uh, Gia and her, uh, her talent. Every, everyone has seen. I don't have to, uh, you know, repeat that. But what I carry with me is that, is that little girl. And I know I will meet her again. I will meet her again. She will be back because God is very merciful. God is very kind. And God will give me another chance to be with her. And that might be forever. I was just I, telling. I want to be. I want to. She's telling me in my mind, Mama, please don't cry. Mama, please don't. I'm happy. I'm in such a peaceful place, Mama. I'm waiting for you. And when you will come, we'll do this, we'll do that. This is the communication she has. Because she used to talk to me 10 times, and I miss that. She used to tell me everything. You know, I miss that. We did things together, so many things together. She loved water. She loved sea. She loved water sports. I mean, she was a very adventurous. She liked paragliding. She loved climbing mountains. She, she was very adventurous. I know. And she had friends, you know, the music she would compose. Look at Nishab was one example that she composed, choreographed, composed, directed her own song, Take Light. And, you know, she was so talented. She was, but the thing is, you know, as much talented you may be, there is a process in every industry that you start as a kindergarten, you start and take baby steps. So this is what I used to say. You may be very talented, you may be genius, but you have got to take baby steps in, in the industry that you enter. Your confidence in your, your oomph, you know, that people loved it and, and gave you, accepted you. Now you have got to calm down and take it slow. And that is why she slowed down. You see, sometimes the spotlight also burns you. So I said, these media that is coming after you and wanting your little bites and your pictures and all like that, don't get burnt with that because, you know, it, uh, film industry and the media, it's, it's a very exhausting uh, place. It exhausts you mentally, physically. So you need a time out. So why don't you take time out and do something that you want. And she wanted to do brand management, you know, because she wanted to, she wanted to create, uh, she's a brand. So she wanted to do brand management so that she can, you know, take her brand elsewhere. She doesn't need to hire people to manage her brand. 
So she had eight months of a gap she deliberately took because she had six films, three films she signed that night and CBI has got that evidence. Three films, she was in communication with UTV and two films she already had in the pipeline. So she had work. It was Suraj Pancholi who was telling her all the time to do this and to do that, controlling her. She had 